Hey friends, welcome back. So today we are gonna build a 24 channel mic split panel. Uh, so this is a for you hinged um, IO panel that's designed to go into an in-ears rig. Um, so this is a standard punch panel for us. If you'd, uh, you can buy this panel actually if you wanna do this work yourself. Um, check out uh, lmcasesonline.com. Um, I'll leave a, a link below so you can check that out. Um, so you can either buy it unloaded like this and do the work yourself, or um, or we can uh, we can build it for you. So anyway, um, this rig is going into an in ears rig that's going into a Pelican case. This is going to be the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a male and female XLR for each one of these um, these punches right here, and then uh, we're going to also build a, a custom tail on the back. Um, so this is uh, going to basically allow all of the stage inputs to be patched into the panel directly. Uh, the sound company can can take the output here directly from the male XLR, and then the tail on the back is going to um, be uh, plumbed directly into the uh, mixer. So anyway, uh, let's get started, and uh, we'll show you how we build a splitter panel. So to attach this panel, we're going to use a 440-inch Torx screw. So this is just a little machine screw, um, and we are going to use a corresponding a lock nut. So this is a uh, this is just a regular 440 lock nut with a little nylon insert. So in order to expedite this process just a little bit, uh, I do have a quarter inch nut driver and a drill um, with a with a Torx bit fitted. So if you are going to use uh, if you're building a rack panel in in uh, in this way. And you do want to use a drill? Um, I highly recommend hand tightening all of these. But when you know we're going to do 48 connectors here, and that's going to take a minute. So um, there is there is a device called a chuck on your drill. <laughs> use it. <laughs> you want to be on the absolute minimum torque setting so that if you run your drill like this, you can grab it like that and it'll stop. You don't want to use the drill bit setting. You want to go as light as you can on this, or you can strip it all out because it's very small hardware. So. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get this thing built. All right, friends, so we've got all of our connectors tinned, and what I did was make little tails. So this is Megami uh, multi-core cable. Uh, so this is a flexible multi-core cable. Um, each one of these is labeled just like this. So there's one and, well, two and, and so forth. So up to eight channels and one multi-core. So what I did is, in an effort to get a you know, three-ish foot tail, I ended up cutting a five-ish foot tail thinking that, you know, we're going to have to find center, which is what you watch me do at eight inches. We're actually decided to do nine inches left to right that gets us from a center point on the panel just like this 
and uh, we can we can stretch our, our pieces left and right here. So um, what is going to happen with this particular panel is there are lacing bars that go across here. So all of this cabling will actually get tied down. Um, so when you're doing a split panel for in-ears, uh, you don't actually need a transformer. Um, you're essentially just building a very pretty Y cable. Um, if you want to get crazy with it, you can add a little switch on each one of these that uh, will lift the ground, um, which basically it just, uh, you wire the switch in line to pin one, and then you can um, uh, just click the switch and it, it just breaks the circuit on, on pin one uh, to get ground uh, loops out of the equation. But in theory, um, if, you're, if you're tying all of your grounds together, it's, it's okay. Um, that being said, uh, with our jumper cables, uh, so I cut this little um, this little this little section, which I you know I, I would lie to you and tell you that I measured it, but I didn't. It's just an eyeball. Um, so in each in each one of these um, in each one of these um, conductors here, or one of these these pairs, you get four cables in each of this. So you have your hot, your cold, your uh, your ground. Um, and then you also get this drain wire right here. So oftentimes if you're looking at cable specs and they're calling something a drain wire, you do have your shield and then you have this separate uh, jacket that's in here. Um, you can, with a Neutrik connector, with a standard uh, NC3 connector, which is what we're using here, um, you do have pins one, two, and three, which are your, your hot, your cold, and your ground. And then you can also ground at the physical uh, chassis right here so if we do have four uh, connectors here you can ground at the physical chassis um you know i i i think you can get crazy with that kind of stuff um you know it's uh you you can argue that this is steel uh and this is aluminum and they're non-conductive so you know um you're you're touching it with the the screw heads here um, you know, you, you can in theory argue that you're, you're making that ground already, especially because within, uh, within the jacketing here, you know, we're taking the shielding that came out of here and twisting it. And then this drain wire is also an un, um, an unjacketed or an uninsulated cable and it's also touching it. So in my mind, doing that's a, a, a bit redundant. Um, so I, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, gonna use it here. So I, I'm just gonna cut the, uh, the copper. I'm just going to cut this copper shield off, use it as pure shield, and use the drain wire as the uh, the ground wire as our pin one. So uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, before I start the time lapse, if this doesn't bore you, that, that whole process that you watched for, for however long that took, took about an hour to load and tin these. So it's, you know, this is a very labor-intensive process to do this. So um, I'm going to uh, get this as my out. So my out XLR uh, per, so this is in, this is out, this is in, this is out, and et cetera. Um, I'm going to get this as a tail, soldered in uh, just like this, have this loose, and then when we go to tie in uh, our input, um, we, can, uh, we, can, we can trim this down. So um, here is, uh, here we go. All right, everybody, so we've got all of the output tails soldered. So this is all 24 output tails. You might be asking yourself, man, that was really tedious. Is this why they do this with an integrated PCB? The answer is yes, that's why they do it. So anyway, now that these are soldered, I am going to uh, get the output snakes the in each group of eight done, and uh, we'll play around with the lacing bars and see how these cables are going to land. So. Let's check it out.
right, everybody. So this is the first one out of 24. Uh, so what I'm up to is I'm starting from the middle rows out. It's going to be the easiest thing. The middle ones are the most challenging. So um, I've got my lacing bars in here as a very temporary uh, kind of thing. So I just have the middle ones. So I've got a zip tie holding my um, 17 through 24, or uh, excuse me, 9 through 16 uh, trunk line in. Um, and we'll get this. We'll get this all soldered together. But uh, this is uh, this is where we're at. I am just gonna check back in with you, and uh, after we get the first eight done. So and there we go. So uh, we've got the first eight finished. Um, so I am using these colored uh, boots here for every group of eight because my least favorite thing uh, when working with a snake of any kind is just finding the channels. Everything always gets really tangled. It's just it's just a pain. So uh, with Neutrik, you can buy these little boots. Um, I, I have uh, gray, which I think actually looks really cool. I'm going to definitely... Uh, start to add these to a lot of my cables. Um, I have a blue one and I also have a green one. So the first eight are labeled uh, with the uh, the gray. Um, and then I've also got heat shrink on here. Um, so one of the things that, that also kind of irks me is when you get to the six and the nine. Um, so these do say uh, five and then five spelled out. So um, I've got all of my tails kind of taped together like this so that I can keep the um, I can keep the ends of these all the same length. Um, uh, I, I've been doing a lot of time lapse with this project because I'm, I'm, I'm under a bit of the deadline to get this done. And if I, if I really go crazy with filming, um, I'm, I'm never going to finish up. So uh, one of the things that I did do was um, make this heat shrink uh, here just to kind of guide things. This is going to go into a rack. It's technically never going to be opened. But uh, these, these three individual lines of, of eight um, I, I felt that it would be nice to just kind of keep them together. So um, I am going to work on uh, 9 through 16. <laughs> Everybody, the panel is done. Here are our male XLRs, color coded gray, blue, and green. All the cables are nice and dressed on the, oops, on the back end here. Um, James, do the honors. Let's take a look at the front here. Here's the front of the panel. So this is uh, an in and an out. And then the, uh, the XLR tails will be permanently patched to the mixer. So we're about to build this in ears rack now. Um, we're going to shoot some video on that. And maybe by the time you're watching that, that video will be done. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Thanks.